Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I'm going to give you all the latest updates on what's going on with this next tropical wave, plus the severe weather for today. But remember, like I've been telling you the last couple videos, our severe weather is about to really ramp down, and it's really going to start going away for quite some time. you got some nice weather and a big high ridge of heat. That is not changing. Now, we'll go through severe weather for today. I just want to update everyone else. If you've never been here before, Make sure you do subscribe. I'm all year long. My weather forecast, as a matter of fact, I've been following the data for a month now on what's going on with our hurricane season. I don't wait for the models to show me anything. Now, we have a high pressure that is forming over here. This is by the Bahamas, and this is swinging everything somewhat into the western Gulf going into the lower 48. Help strengthen some of these storms that comes down while we keep getting these cold front troughs, which will go away by middle of June. This high pressure is going to move. Everything is going to change by the time we go from the 10th on in June. Our high pressure is going to swing way out here into the Atlantic, and that is going to swing everything in this direction as we go through June, which is normally what we have around June and July. They form up real close to home, so we really got to watch out for something forming up very fast. Now, we have something forming up in this region as we go through the middle from the 10th through the 20th of June. It's going to be in this region is where our favorable environment is. This is where storms has been growing and it's been showing for a long time now. You can see the picture on the side. Almost two weeks that we have something coming in this direction in the models as well. So I'm going to show you the latest data. I'm going to show you the latest model runs and I'm going to show you the latest trend so you know what is going on because this is really going to be ramping up, ramping up fast. But then we're going to go on a little bit of a break for hurricane season before it comes back. So remember, all timestamps are in the description below, so you can go directly to what you want to see. Thank you again for your time. Thank you to everyone that hits the like button, that shares my information, lets other people see what is coming. The best thing we can practice here every year, I always scream this for hurricane season, it's all year, but especially hurricane season is safety. So thank you to everyone that does care for others and helps share this information. Now, when I do afternoon updates on the tropics, it will not include any of the severe weather. Cause like I said, that is going to start going down soon. So I'm not going to be including that, but you can see for yesterday, I did post my community tab before I went and helped with the kids on their field trip that we have these storms passing through and you can see that you did get a lot of wind damage coming through to south central as well you got more of that coming for tonight and you see up here this is where i was i went from milwaukee over here towards green bay i went to bay beach amusement park and it was very nice for the kids we actually caught some storms on our way back i thought i had till about 2 p.m and they started coming down fast by 1 p.m they were moving quick but I mentioned that, can you see now we have power out of just going on. We still got some for California as well. That comes and goes. That's at 10,000 when you're at the yellow. You can see Texas is at a whole, over 100,000 homes without power. Louisiana over 20. Mississippi over 20. Let's see if it got any better as we refresh it. It's gotten a little bit better, not much, but you see how California comes and goes. Now remember, you do have this big heat dome that's going to be building for quite some time. And for today, you can see a lot of very hot temperatures, especially in the South Central. You bring in over 100 degree temperatures now coming in from Mexico, coming into Texas. And you can see for the Southwest, you're getting those 90s starting to bring around. This is going to get worse as we go through tomorrow and beyond also but with all these dew points raising up all this humidity you have you have a lot of heat indices coming in now you're going up to over 120 degree heat indice feels like temperatures mostly going down into southern texas also going to feel it all the way up from houston to dfw into oklahoma very warm temperatures for today and it's going to feel even worse this is going to be like breathing in a hot air dryer now for tomorrow, this is going to come right back up again and swing over to the southwest. And you can see for the southwest, now it's starting to look a little bit like the south central for today. Now you're getting that 100 to 105 swinging all the way up towards Redding, California. There's going to be a lot of extreme heat and a lot of extreme temperatures coming in the coming days. Remember, this heat dome is going to stick around for quite some time. Now, this is also swinging the 90s all the way up to the central plains, not just for the southwest, but with your heat indices, this is once again bringing 120 degree heat and as he feels like temperatures to southern Texas. This is going to be extreme heat. This is going to be very hot. So please be aware of what's going on. Now, just so you are aware, these storms that are moving through this evening is bringing a lot of winds. And then we're going to get some more winds that's going to start moving in for tomorrow as well. Now, for today, we do have two slight risk areas for severe weather. This is not for tornadoes. It's for wind and hail. But we do have a chance 
for tornadoes as we go through this evening. Now this is that trough that was moving over as we go through for today and this is going to be sporadic and spread out for tomorrow as well. But we get a big line of storms going all the way from Minnesota through northern Iowa as we go through the evening. Now remember this is central time right here so adjust accordingly. But as we go through later on, around 7, 8 o'clock, we start to get some cells that's roaming through the chances for tornadoes. This is just a 2%. You can see the white with the pink outline. It's a 2% chance for tornadoes. It is a low chance, but it still could be a tornado or two. I don't think it has a high chance. As these cells come through for later this evening, all the way to 10 o'clock, then they start bursting up for the south central over here for Oklahoma going to north Texas. Bring in chances for hail, but you see that bowing out? That's bringing chances for damage and winds, and that's going all through the evening. Now, the latest run has been showing as you go all morning long with that line of storms, maybe another bowing out. If it goes long enough and strong enough, it could be another potential ratio. But you can see how it just bows out all the way from 10 o'clock at night, goes overnight, early in the morning, and then still spreads out for tomorrow bringing some more potential winds. Not showing that it's going to be a big high-end wind event, but it is bringing some because you can see that big MCS revolving around as you go through for tomorrow, and the storms will be sporadic for tomorrow as well. You can see this. We will have our storms brew up for today. It will come through the upper Midwest, through Minnesota, through Canada. While you get that line of storms moving through all the way through Iowa, you'll get some sporadic in nature for Illinois, a little bit of Wisconsin, some for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, and the southeast. These are just going to be regular thunderstorms. You might get very small hail, not much. This is not going to be what you just went through the last couple of days. As you go through the evening, then you get the tornado chances. And as you go overnight, you can see how it miles down all for the south, Missouri, some of the deep south. Then for tomorrow, it's going to spread right back up again and just be sporadic in nature. A little bit of everywhere now there is a little bit of severe weather for tomorrow but it's not chances for tornadoes this is just gonna be chances for wind and hail this is that trend we've been following showing that if anything becomes severe for wednesday it will be right here for the intercoastal northeast and that showed true and that is chances just for wind and hail no tornadoes on that now so far it's showing the bowing out will be on the eastern side of dfw going towards eastern texas and oklahoma this will move around a little bit matter of fact this bowing could go all the way into arkansas and louisiana if it still happens later on in the runs this is just what's showing for right now and you see so far it's bringing the 50 in the orange the 60 miles per hour wind gusts in the red maybe some high peaks of even more coming out of these cells and winds will continue for today as you go through washington oregon bringing some more 40 50 miles per hour wind gusts get up to 60 for the higher elevations but it starts getting a little bit higher as you go through montana and wyoming that's getting from the 50 to 60 to 70 to higher elevations getting maybe up to 70 that's a possibility you know how you get high winds up there in those higher peaks you're going to get some high winds as you go through the rest of today but then for tomorrow as the storms push on through it's going to bring more winds of 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts across upper midwest for the dakotas across northern minnesota northern wisconsin and the up of michigan just be aware it's bringing more winds for tomorrow also Another thing is bringing and bringing quickly for today, just until 1 p.m. for tomorrow, you have a big heavy area of two to three inches of rainfall for eastern Texas, southeastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas, and northwestern Louisiana. And this is to put you into the moderate risk for flooding for today. And you can see everyone else, you are going to get about an inch of rainfall. You have the slight risk going all the way up from Minnesota into Canada. Also over here for Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. But you also have this moderate section that has grown as you go from Oklahoma City all the way down towards Shreveport, all the way from Tyler, Texas, into Arkansas. So you should be aware you have a moderate section for flash flooding for today. This means that the water will pond up very quickly on the roads, and those dead-end streets where there's only one way in, one way out could flood as well. So let's go to the latest tropical update. This is what I concentrate more on when we get to this part of the season because severe weather does ramp down. I will keep you updated of any storms that will come to the U.S., but we'll concentrate more on this also with the updates so we are very well prepared because as you know in my last update, we're going to above average season expected and a hyperactive matter of fact. And that's all because we have that above average temperatures. Matter of fact, our temperatures are like August right now and we're just now going into June. That's in the tropics. 
Plus, we have low wind shear that's going to be moving in because it's La Nina pattern. And like I showed you last time, this strong La Nina pattern is going to last all the way until December and January of next year. Now, this could change throughout the day today. Whereas right now at National Hurricane Center, there is nothing for the next seven days. And you see Global Tropics has not changed yet, but you still see all the way from the 12th through the 18th, they're expecting cyclone formation right here. And this is where it potentially can go right into this direction with the next wave. So our latest information with our potential velocity anomaly. This lets us know if we have favorable environment, lifting atmosphere, or unfavorable environment sinking in the atmosphere. This is how we've been following this wave ever since it was way down here. And you can see this is all the way into the middle of July. Now this will change a little bit as it comes along, but you see right now we have a lot of favorable environment kicking in as we go past the six all the way past the 16th we're going to a very favorable time now i thought that maybe this will go into the eastern pacific and it'll be the lower 48 having some serious storms happening because we do have that trough still coming down maybe some front induced due storms still could happen but i'm showing this could potentially be for the tropics as we get something growing over by central america over by the yucatan closer to the bay of campeche and going out towards the Atlantic after that, still showing that true after two weeks. Then after that, potentially have something forming up in the Eastern Pacific, or we go through some unfavorable environment. We're going into a positive to a negative PNA, Pacific North American pattern. So instead of this trough coming in with this high pressure building all this heat on the West Coast of the United States, we're gonna go into a ridge on the East Coast of the United States because this high pressure is gonna be setting in, swinging everything around. But as it expands, it's gonna stop anything from forming in our region. So we gotta follow it as it breathes, as it expands and contracts and lets one of these slip in so far after what we're going through to the middle of june so far we got a little bit of a break we gotta watch some in the eastern pacific this could potentially go towards hawaii while it's really nothing going on maybe some in the mdr beginning of july then maybe another eastern pacific after that while it stays in this unfavorable environment for a while this could easily change but it won't change dramatically it'll change slowly and one thing that's concerning, as you can see here with the GFS, when you look at your chance for your cyclonic vorticity, that it starts becoming more favorable as it goes towards the 10th and potentially getting a low pressure still forming over here by the Western Caribbean, by the Yucatan, and going out to the east, northeast, bringing that favorable environment with it and getting stronger to a tropical storm, maybe even more as that goes away. And as of our latest sea surface temperature anomaly right in that region is where we have above average temperatures really kicking in strong. We're talking 85 degrees and above. And you can see your sea surface temperatures, all of this is above average right now. And we're just getting going. So when you go through the rest of your information, see what the possibilities are. You can see when you go through the Euro, you go through all possibilities, chance for a tropical depression to form up as you go from the 10th through the 13th, showing that it will be over here for the Eastern Pacific, potentially by the Yucatan going towards the Bay of Campeche, over here by South America, just traveling across. It's been showing that for a long time. But you can also see here when you look for the long range with the Euro, that as that propagates to the West, that as we go towards the 12th and beyond, it starts getting a favorable environment, potentially going into the Gulf and swinging around the East Coast of the lower 48. So we do need to watch this transition. We are going to get that high pressure that's going to be forming over here and swinging everything around. Matter of fact, as you go with the weekly average of what a tropical cyclone strike probability will be, as you go through the 10th, you can see that pattern going to the west. But as you start going further and go towards the 17th, you see how it grows up that little northern pole and maybe a front end due system forming right off the coast. This is bringing a lot of energy in this direction as we get this high pressure it's going to be swinging everything in this pattern as it comes across so this could easily bottle up and be a huge storm for the lower 48 and it could easily be a tropical system in the atlantic then after that showing by the euro that as you go past the 17th towards the 24th a more of a northern push into the gulf 
is possible, but showing ultimately that your best chance for tropical cyclone formation, according to the Euro, is in this yellow formation towards the Bay of Campeche and best favor in the Eastern Pacific so far. And the Euro is showing that once you get to around the 12th of June, now remember this is still past 48 hours, it will still change, but remember we've been seeing this for a couple of weeks now that we're going to start getting a low pressure formation possibly going to the east northeast after that so far showing maybe something weak by the euro i will show you some more information and maybe strengthening up after that when it starts pushing further to the north more like the 15th and moving a little bit later in june so when you take a look at your ensembles and see what the average is, you can see with the long range with the Euro, chance for a low pressure to form up as you go by the 13th and starts moving to the east, northeast, even builds up as you go to the 15th and beyond. Chances for something to form up right in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see how it's going to be swinging everything around and going potentially into the U.S. Even getting stronger potential later on in june you can see the same thing with the gefs i'm going to show you multiple so you can see all the information once you go past the 10th and beyond potentially getting something forming up right over here like last time right by cuba right by southern florida as that swings to the east northeast and if it forms up later could potentially get pushed further into the gulf a little bit deeper and just showing that pattern is going to stick in for quite some time. And you can also see this on the GEPS, another ensemble model. So you can see how this pushes east as you go from the 15th, the 14th, and the 15th, favoring more likely will be later, not the 10th, more like the 14th and the 15th, still showing the same region. And later on, getting even stronger. So as we take a look and see what maybe what the models are hinting at so far. But you can see with the Euro as we get into that formation, there's your high pressure starting to form out here into the Atlantic, swinging everything around. And that's what it's going to continually do as we go in this next pattern. So remember that. And then you can see how everything just swings around and potentially forms up a lot of low pressure over the southeast a lower 48 all the way into Central America. And once you go past the 10th, look how it consolidates and just moves away. That is according to the Euro. And maybe coming back later as you get more favorable environment moving to the West. So as we go by the GFS, let's just see what's trending, what's hitting out there. This is 0Z, this is your balloon data run. And you can see that it's showing it still get a chance for that low pressure to come in, bringing a strong storm for the lower 48. At the same time, getting something in the Western Caribbean right in that probability area and forming up potential tropical storm, potential hurricane as that comes by from the 10th and beyond. It's been showing that for quite some time and we've been seeing this in the data for over a month. So remember that it has not changed from the data. That's the most important part. When you go to the Zixi, the very next run with the GFS, same information, a little bit closer formation. Matter of fact, the trend has been that it could stay weak for this moment and strengthen up later as you get this front coming in, creating that storm system going right out, showing the same thing. Now, normally, you would take that with a grain of salt. That's just GFS. You go by trends when the models don't agree. This is the Canadian showing the same thing, showing it will form up potentially by the 9th or 10th, a little bit further into the Gulf of Mexico. This is concerning. It is warm over here, but you got to remember, it is cooler waters on the northern side of the Gulf of Mexico from all these cold fronts. That part did not get a chance to warm up super hot yet. Still, something possibly forming up, according to the Canadian, doing the exact same thing. Matter of fact, if you need more, you go by the ghost satellite. You can see as you go by the 10th, showing that precipitation will bottle up over here by the Western Caribbean and form something going right around the same direction. So you can see that high pressure swinging everything around. Not a lot of dust coming through to stop that neither. And you can see with your chance for a pressure system that it is bringing a surface low and strengthening up in the same direction as the other models so at this moment with every data that i can find euro is the outlier
when you go by the ensembles and see what's possible, as you go by the tenth, you see a couple possibilities showing something very weak, popping up in that region, maybe even all the way to the Bay of Campeche. But it's starting to pop up already. And as you go a little further, you'll see some of them start to strengthen up in that region. Some strengthen up quickly and just pass by the East Coast. You see this here also over here. That it starts strengthening up, passing by. You can see it in multiple of these, these runs. Then down here, it's showing that it could just bottle up, just stay there and just build for a minute, going towards a golf, which is very concerning. You also see that here. Now you can see also they are showing it in multiple ensembles. And this is going to pop up around the 13th, a little bit later. And you can see in your control member right here, your more likely outcome, that as you go by the 13th and the 14th, potentially form up right past Florida. That's what CFS showed over a week ago, if you all remember. And go out to the east. While it's showing on these other ones, it could pop up in the Gulf also. Still, as of right now, this is your more than likely outcome. And travel to the east. So we do need to watch it because it is still concerning that we have other ones showing it going in the Gulf and becoming an issue. We have multiple showing that. So I will keep you updated. Make sure you click that bell so you get the latest uploads. And here's a closer look for you. So as you go a little closer for the Gulf of Mexico, you see how it forms up over here by eastern Florida. And you can see the rest of them as well. As this pushes to the east-northeast by the 14th and the 15th, if it don't make that track, potentially taking this track into the Gulf, which I do not like. That's a later track. That's the 15th and the 16th. So if that gets stuck in a trough that suppresses it back for a while, it could be the later outcome. Now you can see though that the path is seen by both though. Even though it's not trending with the Euro, you can see with the precipitation, with your rainfall, that it brings some rainfall towards the Caribbean, but it also brings it right over Florida. You can see the same thing with the GFS. It's heavier because it's showing tropical cyclone formation, but it's showing that that is the path. This is your winds, your damaging wind gusts. So far, this will change. I will keep you updated. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. I hope this update has helped you understand what is coming around the corner. If you've never seen any of this information, make sure you do subscribe. We've been talking about it here for weeks, and I will keep you updated. Also, thank you again for yesterday, everybody. My kids had a great time at their field trip, and it was just a fun time. We went to Bay Beach Amusement Park, and just a really great time. Thank you so much. You can see I kind of got some sun going on. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Now, before you leave today, Psalm 71, 1 through 3. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Amen. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day. Everybody, let me know in the comments if you want an update for today.